Hi, uh, I'm Ernie Durawa. <laughs> so I'm glad to be here trying to do a video that uh, hopefully will help you and uh, whoever you you know that you want. I've been playing these uh, drums. Uh, not this is not my A kit. It's just my little practice kit that I keep in my bedroom. But uh, I've been playing these, the drums for sixty something years. I played a lot of different groups of travels around uh, halfway around the world and uh, you know been in a lot of uh, studios and recordings and uh, played on two Grammy Award records and so a lot, a lot of cool things have happened just uh, playing this instrument and I've met so many nice people through my music and just learning to play this instrument so right now I'm gonna play a few different uh, techniques uh, the fundamental stuff that hopefully will help you like they had helped me and uh, take it, uh, I'll demonstrate, uh, I'm gonna start, I'm gonna stop and demonstrate different beats that I use for certain songs uh, with different artists that I've played out with throughout the years. A lot of it mostly with the Texas Tornadoes since I've played with that band for 35 years, something like that, but with other artists as well. So here we go. The first thing that I wanna talk about is basically, I, you know, there's a traditional uh, way to hold the sticks this way, and, and because the snare drum was always on the side, people would, would like you know, playing a marching band, which would go. Like that, see, but uh, I've been playing match grip, which is like this, and now people always ask, why do you play the, the left stick uh, with the butt end of it uh, rather than the other way? Well, that's just something that I started doing years ago and so I always liked the, the butt end of the stick because it gave me a lot more power when I played this way. So if I played uh, like uh, a rock beat, now a straight eighth note beat would be one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four, and, which is your basic rock beat. Then I would play, uh, I like to play a lot of rim shots, so I would play. So that was that. I did a little bit of syncopation on the end of that. Uh, syncopated beat like. All right, so that's uh, uh, basically a rock and roll beat that uh, I actually have played with a lot of different uh, rock bands. Uh, so. Uh, it works for me to use the back I mean, not that, I mean, I could use this end too. But for some reason, it just feels more natural for me to play the back end of this stick for my left hand uh, to play the backbeat of the music. Uh, at the beginning, uh, what you need, or what I have to practice, and actually I still practice uh, these techniques, is single strokes, which is... right-handed single strokes then there is a thing about there is such a thing as left-handed single strokes which means I'm starting my left hand all right so that's fundamental one then uh, fundamental one which is uh, single strokes is what I use mostly like if I'm playing a rock beat and I want to play a drum fill and that's just uh, right-handed single strokes it comes from fundamental one then I have fundamental two, which is the uh, double stroke, also known as the mama daddy roll, because you say mama. So the mama daddy roll is a lot of fun to play. You can get around the set so much easier with these. It's a double stroke roll. Uh, a lot of fills you can play. Now I threw in some triplets in there. Those are triplets. Those are triplets uh, thrown in with the, uh, the these doubles and singles and. 
So what I'm doing is I'm playing a whole a lot of combinations. All right, so uh, with the tornadoes, uh, when I played, I, if they played like a, a polka beat, which the tornadoes play a lot of polka beats, and, which is basically known as your 2-4 beat because I'm playing two beats per measure. So basically, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. But this is what I would play uh, with the tornadoes for this particular song, like Hey Baby, Que Paso. And since it's not a real hard driving song, I can actually play with this end of the stick. But actually, I may find myself playing this since I'm used to playing the butt end. Some uh, little syncopating on, on that groove too. Maybe some buzz rolls. So that's that. And uh, also, uh, that would work uh, if I was playing uh, if I was playing a country song. Like uh, let's just say I'm playing uh, uh, the Cotton Eye Joe. Same beat. Maybe I decided that I wanted to play a Jewish uh, wedding and I'm playing Hava Nagila. 2-4 is 2-4. Uh, if I want to go play a, a German polka, 2-4. I mean, see, all these rhythms, and, and so they're all related. They're all related. So once you figure that out, you go, wow, I can, I can play this and play that. And it's all uh, rhythms. The, the beats and the rhythms are all all related they're all the same okay so now uh, in uh, when I play uh, stuff with uh, with the jazz vatos or even with tornadoes uh, where we decide we want to do uh, some Latin be beats uh, Doug Sam would always uh, in fact he called me to come to uh, San Marcos uh, in 1989 when we recorded our very first uh, tornadoes record and he wanted uh, to, he, he called me and he said, Ernie, would you come and play uh, the, uh, that Duncan Yonka beat that you play? And I said, uh, what do you mean by uh, Duncan Yonka beat? He goes, you know, that Duncan Yonka beat that you play. Oh, I think you mean the Bolero beat. Okay, well, that goes like this. So I'm going to play that with the snares off. So that's off, see? And that's the snares on. So the difference, all right? All right, so now with the snares off, the Duncan Yonka beat, then we're going Duncan Yonka. And that works good with having the back end of this stick. So what I'm doing, I'm getting uh, several different sounds. I'm getting that sound. I'm getting cross stick sound. I'm getting this sound. That sound, and I'm getting this sound. A little bit of a ring, so it sort of kind of sounds like a tambali. And then, so there's that, 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 that. So when I put them all together, all right. So also, uh, like when I play with the jazz vatos and stuff, that I can actually. Uh, then I it could speed up and play like fast type grooves, and so then I would go like this. Or I can use the bell of the cymbal. Now, if I want to play authentic cumbia kind of groove, then I reach for the cowbell, and I don't really have it mounted anywhere, but I'm going to try to play it on my tom tom. So the cowbell, it really adds a lot to certain kind of grooves. So the cumbia beat, then I'm playing uh, with the cumbia beat, uh, as I would play uh, with the tornadoes or any other band, would be, uh, I'm playing two different grooves. I'm, on the cowbell, I'm playing, and here's how you count it. One and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two. So be like one and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three and a four. Right. So then on my left, that's my right hand. So my left hand is playing two, three, four, and two, three, four, and two, three, four, and. So together.
in the middle of that. So that's that. That's more of like a kunga beat. But I wanted to play uh, like a really kind of a rocking kind of thing. And I want to add you know, more to like a Santana kind of groove. Then I'm going to turn the snares back on and I can just play straight quarter notes on the cowbell. Playing the snare on the end of two. One, two, three. Well, I can play it on two. I like it on the end of two better. It kind of it's syncopated, it kind of grooves better. So uh, as far as um, getting into swing and stuff like that, uh, if I want to go, and this is a, a, a book that, a couple of books that I, I'd like to work out of, and uh, this particular book is uh, really good for several, several things. This particular book is a syncopation book. Uh, a lot of uh, musicians, a lot of drummers work out of this book. It, it's just all about time counting and stuff. But for me, it does. It has two purposes. It, it helps me with, uh, with my reading, but it also helps me with uh, warding off dementia, if you want what I mean. Because uh, when, when you read the notes and when you uh, do crossword puzzles, or you do certain like things, uh, they really keep your, you want to keep your brain uh, active and stuff, see? So, what I do with this book, and I'll have uh, eighth, uh, eighth notes uh, with quarter notes, and, and I'll just go through this, this whole book like this. become dotted and when they become dotted it turns into either swing or shuffle so then it now it has a little jumpy beat and I can do this left hand too there's so many different ways that you can practice this I can go like this this book. Uh, and then if I go to the next page, uh, then I have a combination of triplets and quarter notes together. So I can go... And it keeps your eyes really active with what's going on. Uh, if I switch, switch over to the next page, I have a combination of, of uh, triplets uh, with eighth notes. Switch, turn the page over, and then I have them with dotted. So it's a great practicing uh, book. Uh, going on to this other book, this book here is is a actually a, a book for big band type reading and uh, for swing kind of grooves. It's a lot of fun. It kind of shows you some left-handed. Uh, Bruce here, so uh, so I'll play a few of these. All right, so then it would be. Uh,